Lily Allen, the face of Chanel, a multi-platinum album-selling star, and one of the world's most controversial young upstarts. I'd like to dedicate this song to Mr. David Cameron. It's called Fuck You. Is ditching her A-list life and everything that goes with it. There was a point where I had an eating disorder. I used to vomit after meals. I wasn't happy. I really wasn't. I am hyperventive. <laughs> Lily's risking it all on a new venture, a clothes shop. I love my new doll. I want everyone to have the experience of being able to wear those items of clothing, whether they've got the money or not. This will be a crash course in retail. That's amazing. I've been earning a lot of money over the past five years, so I have no idea what your average girl would spend in a shop. The minute you go, oh, actually, no, I can afford 2000 but I'm giving it to you for £500. I'm go, stuff it, Lily. Lily's going into business with a sister she hasn't always gotten on with. I love disco balls. I really do. We have this meeting book to um, So I don't miss appointments. I just don't do it. And she's using her own cash. The profit and loss statement says we're minus 52,000. Brilliant. Definitely need to go have a meeting with the banky wanky and ask for a loony woony. Lily's exit plan isn't just about business. I've met the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with. I want to take the next steps. <laughs> this is what happened. The good and the bad. It really frustrated Lily when she would read in the press that it had miscarriage in it. And it still, like, it really fr it frustrates me when I read it. You know, it was a really long battle. And I think that that kind of thing changes a person. The story of a girl who tried to get herself what we all take for granted. A normal life. <laughs> Emails aren't working. I'm about to have a really bad anger management day. Lily Allen has begun to realise her dream of setting up a shop. <laughs> okay, Renting vintage designer frocks to girls who could never afford to buy them. They'll be able to see how much something will cost, and if they have the money to be able to afford that, then that's great. But it also, they'll have the option to still take that item of clothing out of the door, but they're just renting it. <gasps> That's amazing. I think it's amazing. It looks amazing. <laughs> she invested a quarter of a million pounds into the business and went on a spending spree. So far, I have to say, you've liked pretty much everything I've Yeah, shown. I know. They showed their collection to a focus group. It's 320. <gasps> what? I think that's too much. Oh, too much. Fuck off. Lily put her sister, a complete newcomer to business, in charge of the money. If you'd said to me a year ago that I would be in this position, I would have said, well, you're crazy because I can't manage my own account. If she can't prove to me that she can run this thing, then I'll have to pull the plug on that thing. May 2010, with Lucy in disguise, is planned to open in September. It's full steam ahead. So tomorrow we've got 10 a.m. with Murray, then 1 p.m. at Princess, um, and then 4, you've got the doctor. No, the psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Lily stepped out of the limelight two months ago, the press is still hungry for stories, and now their attention has turned to Sarah. Oh, uh, yeah, did you hear about this? Murray said, Murray's, we're suing the Daily Mail on Sunday. It's my favourite thing to do on a weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. What happened? Because apparently you want it to be... You really want to play on the whole celebrity thing and, um... And, <laughs> and really go for it with, like, the reality TV series and I just want to be a lot more reserved about it and step away from the cameras and that's the whole point that I'm doing this. Um, but you're just like, you know, it's a competition winner sister that's like, Come on, Lil! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. We're gonna see them though, don't worry. Good. Just as the girls are getting into the swing of things, Lily is pulled back to her old life. So now that Elton's not coming, have we got spe more spaces then? No. Lily's happy to leave the world of pop behind, but the world of pop isn't ready to let her go. It's my fucking party. <laughs> her last album has earned her three nominations at the prestigious Ivan Novello Songwriting Awards. Certain element of today that I'm a bit wary of. I don't really want everyone to look at me. <laughs> Does that make any sense? I'm not feeling them. I haven't done it really for a while. It makes me a bit nervy. 
feel a bit vulnerable, perhaps. I don't like all the like, press tabloid yeah. journalists being there trying to, you know, get some kind of scoop. It, you know, that makes you feel like you're under attack, so you automatically kind of get defensive, and then if they start shouting things or trying to wind you up, then you're more likely to react if there's, you know, 15 guys and 10 members of the public on the street all kind of staring at you. You know, calling your mum a whore or something. If you're a pervert, what's your perfect job? Chasing, you know, teenage girls around with wearing short skirts and lots of makeup. Perfect. You look nice today, darling. Fuck off, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, yeah, it's such a nightmare. Lucy in Disguise's only employee is its brand director, <laughs> Jess Morris. I'm very impressed. No, because last week it was hilarious. Did I tell you this? No. So we were in the middle of cataloguing all this stuff, and I said to the girls, I said, look, I've got a really important conference call for uh, two o'clock, so I need to be away. And the girls were like, OK, OK. So off I went, and I'm on the phone to this psychic. Six months I've been waiting to talk to Dorothy Chitty. Anyway, I'm downstairs having a cup of coffee and they're telling us about the business. I mean, you'll find it hilarious. I was like, so how do you think business is going to go? She said, oh, it's going to be amazing. I can see cameras, I can see press, I can see this. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a huge success and all this other stuff. So I came back upstairs and I was like, it wasn't really a conference call. I was just on the phone to be psychic. Everyone was pissing themselves. It's hilarious. Friends with the likes of Kate Moss and Sienna Miller, Jess's background is in high fashion labels such as Vivian Westwood. Aussie Clark dress will be amazing. It's her job to generate press and develop the company's brand. Lots of amazing 20s and 30s things. And if we want it to be a success, then Sarah has to get really good at number crunching. Lily has to get really good at sifting the wheat from the chaff and knowing what's good vintage and what's not. All of the eyes of the world are going to be on us, but it feels a long way away at the moment. <laughs> At the Grosvenor Hotel, after three months out of the public eye, Lily is back in front of the cameras, bringing with her her little sister, Teddy Rose. Before finding out if she's won any of her three nominations, Lily has to run the gauntlet of the paparazzi, and they're happy to have her back. I still kind of just think all of my songs are just sort of like nice with rhymes, really. <laughs> Our showbiz columnist would be very disappointed if she did go through with this plan to retire from the music industry. I can understand that the day-to-day -day stalking can be difficult, but she's a multi-millionaire pop star now. She's got a million ways that she could deal with that. OK, guys, come on. It's a bit of space. <laughs> If you're willing to speak your mind, then, you know, we're going to pick up on that. My little sister's scared, like, I'm going to take her away. <laughs> if you mean Lily. Her turning up with her babe in arms, basically, after so much has been done about her possibly wanting kids, being pregnant, we're going to use that and talk about that. She knows that. So. Oh, look at you, trying to get some juice. Um... I think Lily's always going to end up being a column fodder, whether she likes it or not. It's interesting. It's always going to be interesting, her getting into fashion. It'll be interesting to see if it works, and I'm sure uh, there'll be a lot of people that'll be interested if it flops. Should we go? Yeah. You guys got to go. Mm. Lily, we'll catch up with you afterwards, yeah? Yeah, make sure you Finally, after a cavalcade of interviews, it's time for Lily to find out if she's actually won anything. The winner of Best Song Musically and Lyrically, I think one of the greatest songs of the last five years, it's The Fear, Lily Allen and Greg Kirsten. The Fear. And Greg Kirsten. After six years, just when she's saying goodbye, Lily gets the approval she's been looking for, that of her peers. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so trying to hold it together. Um, uh, thank you to everyone who's um, helped us get to this point, I suppose. But, um, yeah, this song is so, so much about feeling so lost in a lot of ways, and um, this has made me feel quite found all of a sudden, so thank you. <laughs> How's it going? Check me out. I'm going to have I got to you. 
it's no secret that I'm, you know, always striving for acceptance or, yeah, craving it. And um, I don't often feel like that happens. And today I kind of feel, you know, I've, it's emotional for a number of reasons. I've done my job and, and now if someone said to me, you've done it well, which is great. Amazing, you've got top shop there. I mean, it's just beyond. Meanwhile, with Lily out of the picture, Sarah and Jess are left to start the shops. Amazing. 13, it's number 13. <laughs> it's lucky, 13's lucky. 13 lucky. With a budget of 40 grand per year, they want to create a destination shop. I feel like this is meant to be. I'm going to call Dorothy Chitty. <laughs> Let's call the sidekick. <laughs> Not any run-of-the-mill shop on a busy high street, but a shop so cool customers will travel that extra mile to experience it. I just think it's unbelievable. Look at the location, and there's just this crappy old shop in there. I mean, how punk rock is it just to have it, like, right here behind the high street of Oxford Street, like, literally there? Can we have a look at your stock room quickly? <laughs> so that upstairs... Oh, look, card. Great, so you can get all that so down and could... this become another immediate space. This is, yeah, privé and the, the upper tier price point stuff. Yeah. As we're sort of marketing ourselves as the antidote to the high street, that this location-wise couldn't be more perfect because we literally are one street back from the high street. It's a bit in your face, really. It's quite a punk rock thing to do, I think. It's vintage and it's rental and it'd be great. Finding a shop location for Lucy in disguise isn't Lily's only priority. No, just to meet them. It's quite a walk up these stairs. A big part of her exit plan from Pop was to live a more simple life. This is my new place that I bought. <coughs> and these stairs are going to tone my ass. While running a new startup business, I'm also supervising and designing my flat. The home's quite important to you, isn't it? Why is that? Because I like sitting on the sofa and watching telly and I like to do it in a nice room. <laughs> and I like a good bath. <laughs> so this will be my bedroom. I've earned a lot more money than Sam has earned and we want this to be our place. So it's not, I can't really spend the money on things that I would have done if it was just me on my own because I want it to feel like it's ours. And I can't say, I want that £10,000 sofa because Sam will just be like, oh well. Can't have it. <laughs> this was the selling point for me. Or for us. Come on. It's London! BT Tower. That's my beacon for when I'm drunk and can't find my way home. I'm like... <laughs> you know, I feel like I've met the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with and... Um, I don't think we both feel like that, otherwise we wouldn't have bought a place together. Um, and I suppose, you know, I want, want to take the next steps, really. And um, for me, that's, you know, building a home together and thinking about having children. What are your plans for kids? Are you sort of thinking, is that like in the next year? Or... I'm having my coil taken out next week. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm getting a bit into it with the questions. <laughs> no. Um... No, um, I don't know. I think probably, you know, we'll start trying in the next few months, for sure. It's weird, because I kind of feel like... I've always kind of felt like I'm not very good at anything. Um, and I still think that. I'm not really passionate about anything. I don't really love certain types of books, and I'm not really into film, and... I mean, I like music, but it's not my life. Um, and I just kind of have this feeling that having kids and being a mum probably is my vocation, really. Really? I like looking after things, and I like making home nice and I like making food so it takes a few of the boxes. <laughs> Two months ago, Lily Allen's sister Sarah was working on the door of a London nightclub and had no idea about business. Um, just woken up. Now in charge of the finances for their clothes shop, she's been working late and has been sleeping in the office. This here is my bedding, which actually happens to be Mabel, the dog's dog blankets. <laughs> it's very glamorous. <laughs> it gets quite cold here at night. 
I should probably bring a duvet and pillow in because I have been sleeping here quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I could actually survive quite well here. You know, I've got a big wardrobe on the other side. I've got lots of food and drink around me. I've got a little loo upstairs and a toothbrush and some face wipes. <laughs> what more does a girl need? <laughs> Sarah's been working on a business plan to secure a bank loan for Lucy. In my head, it's exactly like Dragon's Den. That's exactly what I'm imagining, like me and some sort of whiteboard with flip charts and, and then them just firing questions at me and me completely losing it. That's, that's the uh, scenario that's going around and around in my head. You know, our bank accounts are not going to have any money in it for much longer. So if we don't get uh, a bank loan soon, pretty much the project will be on hold. You know, a month ago, these sheets of paper would have sent me into complete panic. Um, but I think I've got a handle, quite a good handle on, on what all the numbers mean. I'm hoping Lily can come up here for a bit and we can kind of go through things together. So far, the girls have amassed a huge collection of expensive vintage clothes. OK, next thing. How many pieces do you think we've got, Lil? <laughs> But now they need to find the right location, get their marketing right, and get it financed. Making a note of how much you're spending. Yeah, it's all in my yeah. account. It stays there. Yeah. But with no shop and therefore no customers, Lily's initial investment is running dry. Grabbing the opportunity of having Lily in the office, Sarah calls in a financial advisor. Go through startup costs. Lily. Coming. I'm just putting Mabel to bed. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Andrew. Hi, good, thank you. So, what, what's, what's happened? How are the numbers looking? Scary? They're looking too good at the moment, as, as I, I know that it's telling me that there's lots we've missed out. Does anything jump out at you as being ludicrous? Are you reckon 20,000 is enough for furniture? Have you done the pricing for your rails and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, that was a question I had. Do the rails count? Is that refurb or furniture? It doesn't really matter right. where you categorise it, as long as it's in it's there. In there yeah. What about things like security? Cameras, all that sort of thing, alarm systems. <laughs> <laughs> Have you also included in your financial model for items disappearing, not coming back? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of missed out, and maybe you've been too optimistic on sales. Sales. Can I be blonde for a moment? Yeah. I've, I've never understood the word dividends. I've never been so scared to ask. What's it dividends mean? is when you pay yourself some money. Uh, oh, that's right. Other than blind. salary. <laughs> <laughs> Because I've never done this before, I'm constantly worrying um, and beating myself myself up about have I thought about everything. I, I keep a notepad by my bed and do wake up in the night and scribble things on it, you know. I lo I, that's how I work best, with, with lists. My memory is not that great, so I, I need it. It's essential for me. It's probably not right for a business meeting, is it? Two months ago, they called on retail expert Mary Portis to help them out. Sarah, is this really inappropriate, then? It's a bit too whimsical. Mm. Now she's here to advise them on locations. Oh, flowers. So this is your little office. Yeah. It's cute. Lily's showing Mary locations in the rag trade area, just behind Oxford Street. We thought, right, we'd better be open by September because we don't want to miss out on the Christmas market and the party season, mm. you know? No, you don't. An area known by retail professionals but not frequented by shoppers. What is this? This is, <laughs> this is someone's head office, isn't it? Like this that. isn't a shop. We don't want this. No way, Lily. It's an office. It's I haven't shop. seen this place. But... It's not a shop, is it? Yeah, this is not oh, a shop. What's this? It's an office. Bad enough that we're not even on the main thoroughfare, but then we find an office around the back of the end of the I'm feeling stressed. Lily doesn't want her shop to be on a busy high street. Instead, she wants it to be a retail destination, 
a place that customers will have to travel to. So this is it. And where she won't be able to rely on passing trade. Hello. Are you all right? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? No way, Lily. The, the truth of the matter is it's, it's off-piste. There's no two ways about it. Even if you say, well, top shop's up there yeah, around the corner, the corner, it's still up there around the corner, so you're not on the main thoroughfare. So that massive footfall that you miss, you know, don't ever underestimate footfall. It's just so important. So you really do then have to make it a destination. So they really, really, really have to want to come and find you because there is no other retailer here. But then there's an argument to say, I mean, even just from people around the area knowing that I'm in that office, we have kids ringing the doorbell and asking for autographs. If we're in the main footfall, I mean, we don't really want to have our shop just full of kids asking for autographs. And I don't, I'm not like, you know, trying to make mm. out I'm a big star or something, but realistically, that's... We don't want that clogging up yeah. the genuine sales. Why Why do you want a standalone, first of all? Because I've got a sort of romantic idea of missing behind the till. You are not going to be behind the till, are you? Just yeah, I am. Are you? Yeah. Are you? I think more likely she'll be in her office and be coming down a lot to the shop. Is that why you like that place? Look, that, that is one of its selling points for us, for sure. Oh, sorry. sorry. See, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your target customer, Lily? Where's your destination? She's going to be over there. Not until about not till September. I find it astounding I came to look at their shops. It's just terrible, you know? It breaks my heart a little bit. I mean, some of them were offices. They weren't even shops. Offices. I'm sure they've picked up these words somewhere, destination retailing, democratisation of fashion. But what does it mean? Every decision they're looking at at the moment is just not commercial. Despite Mary's advice, Lily is adamant she wants to stay in the area. I think we should put an offer in on the, sh on the shop. Yeah, and I think we need to do it today. Why do you think we need to do it today? Well, I just think we need to... I just think we... Because, for me, I just feel like we need to make another step for having our premises, working it into the business plan, asking for the money from the bank and just moving forward. But I don't think we need to do necessarily do it today. No, but I, I, think, I, mean, I, think, I think we, we should give to... ourselves... Till the end of the week. I think we should take a look at Covent Garden because there's a massive load of redevelopment yeah. going on in the Seven Dials, Dials area. I don't like it on there. Okay. Well, then that's pretty fun. That's pretty. If you don't like it, then we shouldn't even look. Yeah. Jess, what do you think about the Covent Garden area for the shop? Absolutely not. I just think it's really Absolutely cheap, not. cheap around there. I don't like cheap, it. Cheap, young. It's great. I the think we need to stick around. by our guns. Mm. and just go with what... I know it's difficult to go on a hunch and everything, but literally everybody who I say it to, you know, all my older cronies, they say, oh, where's the store? Great Titchfield Street. Oh, genius. Brilliant. I bet you 50, 60 years ago that it used to be more boutique around here. Jess is keen to keep the shop a retail destination and high-end, a brand direction at odds with Mary's advice and with their original brief to rent designer frocks to people who can't afford to buy them. She's a very successful woman. Uh, it's just that in the end of the day, you know, I think that we've got a great idea. I think we know what we're doing and um, we think that we're going in the right direction. Sometimes there can be too much outside influence and then, you know, they'll start, it'll just deviate too much from the path. With the September launch date decided, time is running out and vital decisions need to be made. But once again, Lily has been pulled away from the office. Oh, right, I don't really know what to do. What should I do? What's going on, Lily? <laughs> Moving house. <laughs> After six months of renovation, seven flights of stairs up, Lily is finally moving into her new home. Upstairs in the bedroom. I haven't seen any of this stuff for about seven months, so it's all a bit overwhelming. <laughs> Say probably like 70% mine, 30% Sam's. 
probably lying there. <laughs> More like 90% lying. <laughs> Without Lily around, Sarah and Jess plough on. The frocks keep on coming. <gasps> oh, my God. The Dior chinchilla is amazing. Where's the mirror? Sarah continues to work the numbers for their business plan. Pink is for sales, green is for setup costs, yellow is for running costs. It's a very efficient system. But it's not as easy to find a shop as they had hoped. Yeah, but you know, our budget, you know, we, there's no point in me even seeing stores that are over 40. In two weeks' time, Sarah will have to present her pitch to the bank. And the reality of running a business with an absent, famous sister is starting to sink in. Every day, every hour, there's new questions that I'm wanting to pick up the phone and call Lily, and I'm having to kind of deal with the reality that that's not always going to be possible. It's becoming apparent what a huge responsibility it is. I mean, and I've said this before about, you know, me essentially being responsible for the allocation and distribution of half a million pounds, of which, you know, a lot of it is Lily's money, hard-earned money, and, you know, that's bound to petrify me, and it does. <laughs> Sarah hasn't had a face-to-face -face with Lily for weeks, and armed with a computer full of spreadsheets... Hello. She's managed to drag a reluctant Lily out on a Sunday night to talk numbers. There's a specific formula that you have to use um, when you're doing sales projections with regard to how much, if you think you're going to sell X amount, you need Y amount of stock. So well, basically what I'm saying is that we need to think of other ways of creating revenue based on what we already have, rather than huh. borrowing we'll a whole... We'll just pour ourselves in the shop. <laughs> I mean, one thing I haven't talked with you much about is this idea of by appointment only and creating an event like a, to hire out. I can, I'm just like honestly like astounded by her progress every time I see her and every time she brings up, you know, I mean, I just don't understand where it comes from and what the fuck has she been doing for the last ten years if she's been capable of doing all this stuff. And I think that's a really sellable thing, you know, can be styled by Lily. <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, not according to uh, Daily Mail today. So <laughs> too much money and not enough fashion sense. Yeah, but they're like obviously <laughs> Liz the minority. Jones. Who's and um... got too little money and too much fashion sense? <laughs> 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 I don't know what I'd rather be. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I found it really hard without you there the last couple of weeks. You know, yeah. it's um, I've, you know, I feel like I missed my right hand, ma hand man and the person that I want to get excited about it and so I felt quite lonely when you haven't been there. <laughs> Is that the world's smallest violence? If we don't get more structured about meeting and communicating, it could be really detrimental to the business, I think. We, we really need to work out um, time management a bit better. It's a massive responsibility and I don't want it to cause friction in, my, in our relationship and her to, to blame me and it, it to be something that could last forever, you know. Our, our relationship has never been as good as it is and I want to keep it that way, you know. Lily Allen and her sister Sarah are opening up a shop and today they're asking the bank for hundreds of thousands of pounds. Sarah's been up all night putting the finishing touches to her proposal. This is our startup costs. Uh, we are really pushing it to the limit with £499,298. <laughs> if we don't get £250 grand in May, then we're fucked. <laughs> if Sarah can't convince the bank that they have a business worth investing in, this could be the end for Lucy in disguise. Oh, I don't want to go into the bank. I hate talking about money. It makes me feel sick. If they ask what your role is going to be, what are you going to say? Um, I'm going to be spending. I don't know. I'm the creative side, aren't I, really? Your business, I'm creative in the face. Yeah? Yeah. OK, good. <laughs> Print as fuck. Look, we're just going to have to go. Oh, yeah. time. We're going to need to do like really speedy drive to the Strand now. Yeah. 
The bank that they're going to is no ordinary bank. It's Coots, where the Queen does her banking. Sorry, but I have to have a cigarette. I've got nerves and that. Well, What's the exact time? I'm absolutely terrified of talking about money. I just don't like it. I get scared that I haven't got any left. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a workaholic because I just, I don't want to pay attention to what's going on in my bank. I'm too scared of it. And I don't understand gross incomes, net incomes, profits, this, that. Sarah does. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Hi, Sarah. Yeah. And she's been really, really brilliant at it, and I'm really proud of her for getting her head around it all. Yeah, sorry we're late. We, um, our printer decided to come out at us. Three months ago, Sarah couldn't manage her own accounts. Now she's at one of the most prestigious banks in the world, pitching for a six-figure sum. Cool, brilliant, Judy. Yeah. One hour later, the girls in love. Ever the professional. They didn't laugh us out of town, so um, that's good. They were really, really impressed with Sarah's figures and her numbers, and um, I was very proud. Oh. He is uh, going to look at the figures in detail over the next couple of days and get back to us. High five! <laughs> <laughs> As brand director, it's Jess's job to announce to the world what Lucy in Disguise is all about. Oh my God, that bonkers. I feel like a Power Ranger. <laughs> Amidst the sequins and feathers, she's been cooking up some grand plans to get the word out. You know what? It's all about personality. And for this shoot, it needs to be, as you said, it needs to be very playful. She wants to produce some glamorous pictures to publicise the brand and has asked a 17-year-old model called Suki come in and try on some of the clothes. How are you? Sorry. <laughs> to see if she fits Lucy's rock and roll vibe. I'm Jess. Jess. Come through here, babe. Let's go oh, and have a look okay, at some cool. clothes. Oh, the idea is it's amazing vintage clothes, mm. worn in a modern way. You'll be able to rent as well as buy. Well, so if you were going like out... the best thing ever. Isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. It's all about the renting, man. That's yeah. sick. Exactly. Cool. <gasps> they like stuff like that. That one. Aussie, that one. That's Aussie, that one. You've got to bring stuff like that back. Like, like dudes love it. Dudes love it? <laughs> <laughs> they're nuts yeah. for it, man. Yeah, they yeah, love it. If we were walking around like that, they're like... Yeah. Exactly! Yeah. <laughs> That's my pose. Oh. It's amazing, isn't it? It looks amazing on you, Suki. Amazing. Oh, baby! It's amazing. Oh. <laughs> Fucking hell. This is sick. This is how I want to, like, roll. <laughs> From now on. Great. Right. We'll see it first. We'll see it before you work it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Give it a stomp. Model booked. Jess is in high fashion shoot mode. We're on time, guys. Wow. First not going out on time. Amazing. These photos will be the first thing anyone sees promoting the girl's business. Lucy in disguise. I mean, do you think maybe she shouldn't wear the bra? I mean, obviously pants, because I know you've probably got a huge hairy bush under there. <laughs> <laughs> I just have my first words. Oh, she's lovely. Wow. So funny, I just came in and the model was sitting down and I was just like, can I, can I get you the water? I did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hello. Hello. Good here. This is reality now. This is our first look. Yeah, it's amazing. Isn't it? <laughs> Gotta put your hands in your pockets. Yeah. And push the sleeve. Let me just style it a bit. Hang on a sec. I just feel like we're really a team today, which... You know, I haven't really f felt like that. You know, we've always been doing our own thing within the office, whereas today it's like we're all here, we're all getting the looks together, you know, and everyone's listening to each other. And it's just a really nice atmosphere, it's really good. It's got to be like a modern, young modern take exactly. on the 30s, yeah. so yes. Yeah, so he can't help his modern self. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm in, in my element when I'm doing something like this. You know, I love shooting. It's fantastic. It's always so exciting when you see something coming together and you've got something tangible that you can actually go, here, this is us, look, wow, it's a photo. So I am redonkulously delighted with how everything's going. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay, She's cool. ready. She's ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <gasps> Who's wow. she? I look amazing like that. Look, before. Yes. Oh, duh. <laughs> I love that one. I love that one. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Yeah, I love that. I love that. In her element, Jess is getting ideas to take the Lucy brand even bigger and more glam. Ad campaign. I think we need to do some ads. Like, like this one, Vogue. Mm. You know, this is ID. That one is our ID. You know? I'd love to do Vogue. But they'll give us really good rates. I feel like we should try and get a few pages and see how it goes. Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, um... I'm not Elton John. <laughs> Another day, and once again, Jess has got Lily in front of the camera, promoting Lucy in disguise. They have a growing number of pretty pictures to promote the clothes, but still no shop to rent them from. That was Glastonbury last year. But Jess thinks she's found a contender. Right, bye! <laughs> Seymour Place, a quiet road, again way off piste, creating that destination experience that goes against Mary Portis's advice. I mean, it's a beautiful store, but, I mean, it is tumbleweed, and I'm really nervous at the prospect of being somewhere that we're going to have to work so hard in, but I don't know. Well, let's go and have another look and see what we think. Hi, babe. Yeah. Oh. Meeting them there is Jess's friend, celeb hairstylist James Brown. Come on, babe. Definitely not, definitely not. The girls think that getting James to open up a salon in the shop might be that added lure for the VIP customer. Nice place. Right? Lovely place. I've been doing market research. Have pubs. I said, go? Two pubs. Two pubs. Said, Come on, let's show you around. It is gorgeous, isn't it? People aren't going to come here to sit for four hours to have no, highlights. No, they're not going to come here for a pub. No, more on a wash and a blow-dry place. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. It changes our marketing plan slightly because it makes us a more upmarket, a more zhuzhy place, a lot more high-end. And you know the lower end price point things. We'll put it back. We'll put it. We'll put the high end for a minute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it won't be so low end. You know what I mean? I mean, we we we're cutting out a, a bit of Lily's fan base, but hey, that you know. Swept up in talk of VIP guests, Lily's initial idea of a shop accessible to all seems like a distant memory. You will have to have. In essence, become a loyalty customer. You'll have to have rented and returned two or three pieces in good condition before you get access to downstairs, unless you're Kate Moss or, you mm. know, top stylist or yeah. something. We're, we're, we're making ourselves a high-end Gigi vintage store. And we're, that's what we are. We've got, we need to have a bloody bottle of wine and yeah. have a good old chat about this. We never get two seconds. Right, where's our car okay. gone? Are we... How are you going to relate to Parson Trade, what the store is about? Do you know what I mean? Like, we're going to have quite a lot of press. We all think we're all fabulous, but the public, you know... Don't know pa Pauline well. in Peterborough does not know who James Brown is, the no. same as she wouldn't know who Lily is, you know? No. It's like... You, you... Oh, I don't know. I think Lily's... Well, Lily's well, yeah, Lily yeah, 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 yeah. Not, no, yeah, no, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Retail guru Mary Portis has agreed to help the girls launch their new shop. Oh, okay, but I mean, we'll leave it till tomorrow. After being appalled at their initial property trawl, she's back. However, the only shop they now have to discuss is one mile away from any main street, catering only to a more exclusive clientele. Let's think about your girl. If a lot of them during the week are either in studies or working, that's one hell of a schlep to get across to. Mm. But where's the destination on a wet Wednesday afternoon when you'll start there and all you've got is the ash max coming off Edgware Road? Mm. You've got to be very clear on what your brand is. Is that your brand affordable luxury? I think that basically... Jess always saw it as a place that... I don't know if she does still, but I think that at the beginning she always saw it as a place that she could go and hang out and drink champagne and sit on nice expensive furniture and 
all dressed up in Aussie Clark. How much money is that going to make you? Not very much. We've kind of met in, this, in the middle with this affordable luxury. We've met in the middle. It's like, we are the bosses. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I mean. Our employee. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, in the last couple of months, I've not been around much because I've been working on other stuff. So... Effectively, though, that's not going to ever stop in Lily's life, is what I'm hearing. It's not going to stop. I mean, we've got Lily Allen as creative director when she comes in, in brackets, mm -hmm. and that's the truth. So you, Sarah, are heading this business up. Yeah. If you told me three years ago I was going to be working in, A, fashion, but B, retail, I would have laughed in your face. <laughs> and now I am like, literally cannot think of doing anything else and loving every minute and loving learning and soaking everything up. And it's really one of those things I don't notice when I'm here till 11 That's at night. And, it's... So, and if you want me to speak to Jess on that, if she's not seeing it from, I think you need to have this. And you, you, you will need to think of maybe a line that says, this is our strategy, that's what we buy to. <laughs> Mary's got the girls back on track, and now the three of them are looking for a shop closer to a main shopping area. Yeah, although I did vomit all over the walls in last night, it was really embarrassing. I'm holding up some lecturing now. But once again, Lily's personal life has hit the headlines. The real reason for her absence from the office is front page news. That's me, I'm preggers. I would never say I'm preggers. Maybe prego. Baby. <laughs> But yeah, it's, uh, it's real. Yeah. And there's this picture of me looking pregnant, which was actually taken about four months ago. <laughs> I love that they've chosen a picture when there happened to be a gust of wind going up my <laughs> shirt. I've had worse morning sickness, I think, than most people have, and it's been all, all day. You know, the smell of the streets and the smell of the place downstairs and the volume of people's voices in here just yeah. been too much for me to stomach. The news of Lily's pregnancy has come as a shock for business partner Sarah. It did take a while for me to get my head around it. You know, I was a bit like, Lily, why do you have to do everything now? Like, you know, can't you just be normal and start the business? Um, but she, it's just typical Lily. She just wants to, she gets an idea in her head and she wants to do it. And she's always wanted a family, always. And she's so in love with Sam. And, um, you know, she's going to be a great mum. You know, we'll still go to Lily with the key creative and financial decisions. She still wants to be really involved. But, yeah, a lot more work for me, essentially. <laughs> Thanks, Lil. Mid-July. Lucy in disguise opens in six weeks and they still don't have a shop. I need to kind of get this place a little bit in order. But there is some good news. The bank loan that Sarah has been working on, which will ensure the future of Lucy in disguise, has been approved. But due to a broken phone, the bank has been unable to get hold of Sarah. And Lily's fuming. I think she was a bit frustrated that she heard it via her personal banker because I haven't had my phone. Historically, I've got a bit of a bad reputation with phones. I've lost a lot, and I guess Lily's still, um, you know, her first, um, you know, her instinct is to think it's the old Sarah that's lost her phone. It's not. It's just a broken phone. I'm used to being doubted like that. <laughs> I feel like I have put a lot of hard work into it, and I'd like this, you know, this moment to be, um, you know, celebrated and appreciated. Weeks ago, Lily and Jess totally dismissed Sarah's idea of finding a location in Covent Garden. Oh, shit, that's me. But a shop on King Street a road just off the Covent Garden Piazza, frequented by over four million shoppers each year, has come free. Footfall's great. Um, there's loads of kind of great businesses that we want to collaborate with nearby. It just feels, it feels like a really natural fit. Sarah and Jess have fallen in love with it. Now, it's just a matter of convincing Lily. When you, when you look at the location, it's really quite beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And it really is London, it really it's, is... It's seeped in history, and, and so it kind of marries really well with our idea. It, it's, it's, it's a beautiful setting, yeah. it's right 
the, it's, the piazza is completely visible. It's very grandiose, that street, and mm. it's, it's gorgeous. Um, I mean, I don't go shopping there. You know, I know we all want to make this work, but I feel like this is crunch time, this is my money, I'm scared, so it needs to be right. Mm. Yeah. And I need to Jamie's feel kitchen, in there, Jamie's Italian, that's This is it. this new <clears> development. <throat> Yes, anyway, as I was saying, this is either me making money or losing all my money. This is it now, so this is King Street. It's a beautiful, grandiose, we've got moss boss there, we've seen company, we've got Hackett. This all is it, this. all this frontage. All of this is our store, this whole cream build. Lily gets her first look through the window. Like I think it's just yeah, I do. I mean, I just worry about. I mean, I can't see how in order to get it looking the way that I think it needs to look, it's going to cost money, or you know, we have to work our asses off in order to pull in favors from people. And I just worry about us having six weeks to launch to do that in. You know, we haven't got any other options. So next week, the girls open for business. Maybe it's, so, it's so beautiful what they've created. It's like a proper shop. Sibling rival rears its ugly head. Why not use this space as retail space that people can sell products? Sarah, I'm trying to talk and you keep interrupting me and make me feel like I don't have a right to speak. But the family rally when the worst thing imaginable happens. It really frustrated Lily when she would read in the press that it miscarriage and it still like, it really fr it frustrates me when I read it because, you know, this was... She was in labour for a long time and she um, bore a child. You know, it was a, a really long battle and I think that that kind of thing changes a person.